we are going to continue our discussion on different regions in the complex plane and their topological and geometrical properties and of course if a set is given what is the relationship between a set and a given point now this discussion of different regions in the complex plane is going to help us in exploring different properties of complex functions for example their limit properties their continuity their differentiability and other properties let's begin with our first definition what is an open set now a set is called an open set if every point of s is an interior point of s okay so for example consider these two sets let's call it s1 and let's call it s2 now according to the definition if i choose any point of the set and if it is interior point then and if i choose every point of the set and if it is interior then we say that the set is open so for example in the case of s1 let's choose this point p1 now we know that uh, a point is interior if there exist an epsilon neighborhood of that point which is contained in that set now in this case we can easily see that there exist the following epsilon neighborhood of uh, this point p1 which is contained in this set s1 now similarly we can choose a point very very close to this uh, boundary and still we are able to find a very tiny epsilon neighborhood of this point which is contained in the set s1 but if we choose a point at the boundary then uh, whatever neighborhood we choose for this point this neighborhood is never going to be contained in the set s1 but this point at the boundary is not included in the set s1 because the boundary is dashed and uh, it is not continuous so this means that the boundary is not included so in other words we can say that uh, for every point of this set s1 there exists an epsilon neighborhood which is contained in the set s1 or we can say that every point of this set s1 is an interior point of s1 so uh, we can say that this is s1 is open now let's consider this set s2 now on the same lines uh, whenever i will choose a point in this blue region i'll be able to find a very small epsilon neighborhood of that point which is contained in this set s2 but now uh, what is the difference between s1 and s2 now the points of the boundary are also included in the set s2 so in other words if i choose a point at the boundary let's call it q and if i choose any neighborhood of this q now this neighborhood is not going to be contained in s2 so in other words this q is not interior point q belongs to s2 but q is not an interior point so in other words we can say that this set is not open now a set is open somehow we can say that a set is open if the boundary is open the boundary is not included and if the boundary is included we call this set closed set so precisely a set is closed if it contains all its boundary points so what are the boundary points so uh, recall that a point is a boundary point if it is not an interior point not a, not an exterior point so in other words uh, in this uh, example of s1 uh, these points are the boundary points okay, so all of these points are the boundary points now we can easily see that these boundary points are not included in s1 so we can say that this set is not closed and in the case of s2 we can easily see that all the boundary points are included in s2 so this set is closed now let's continue uh, our discussion we have this uh, definition of accumulation point it is also known as limit point so if, what is limit point or accumulation point a point z not is called an accumulation point of a set s if every deleted neighborhood of z not contains at least one point of s so let's start with this set s and take a point z not now we want to see that if this z not is accumulation point of s or not now the definition says that if every deleted neighborhood of z not contains at least one point of s then this z not is 
accumulation point now note that whatever uh, deleted neighborhood of z not i will choose it will always going to contain some points of s okay so deleted neighborhood means uh, a disk of some radius with center at z not but z not is not included in that disk so this is deleted neighborhood of z not so now in this case i can also consider the following deleted neighborhood of z not now this deleted neighborhood is also going to contain some points of s so we can say that this point z not is accumulation point okay so this z not is accumulation point now let's choose another point so for example a point outside this set s let's call it p now is this point p an accumulation point of this set s so the condition is every deleted neighborhood should contain more elements of s now if i if i choose the following neighborhood now this deleted neighborhood here p is not included deleted neighborhood does not contain any element of s so we can say that p is not accumulation point now once again remember the condition is that every deleted neighborhood should contain at least one point of s so now we have found one neighborhood which does not contain any point of s so this condition is not satisfied so we can say that p is not accumulation point now let's choose another example let's consider this point q this point q is at the boundary now if i choose in neighborhood a deleted neighborhood of this point q now this deleted neighborhood is always going to contain points of s because some part of this deleted neighborhood is always going to be inside this s so how bigger or how smaller neighborhood you are going to choose this neighborhood is always going to contain some points of s so in other words we can say that this point q which is at the boundary of this set s is an accumulation point now uh, we can easily observe that uh, the boundary is uh, dashed in other words the boundary is not included so this part of the boundary is not included in the set s so the point q does not belong to s but q is accumulation point So it is not necessary that uh, for a for an accumulation point that it is a member of the set. So similarly, we can also observe that every point at the boundary is an accumulation point. Now, what is the relationship between an accumulation point and a closed set? So a set, if a set is closed, then it contains all its accumulation point. Now we are going to uh, use this condition to check whether a set is closed or not. another definition is closure of a set now if a set is given it may or may not be closed but we can ask the following question can we find the smallest closed set containing the given set okay so the answer is yes we can do that and the answer is finding the closure of that set so the closure of a set s is the smallest closed set containing the set s and uh, how to construct the closure of the set the procedure is very simple you take all the points of s all points in the set s together with the boundary points so you take all the points of the set s and its boundary points you take union of them and you get the closure of that set s so for example consider the set s given as set of all complex numbers such that the modulus of this complex numbers these complex numbers is less than 1 now we know that this set s is basically this open disk now we can easily see that this set s is not closed because the boundary uh, points are not included in this case but we can uh, take the union of this set s with all its boundary points 
and we can construct the closure. Okay, so what is the closure of S? Okay, so closure of S is going to be equal to closure of S is given by the set of all complex numbers such that the modulus is less than or equal to 1. So when we include this equality, then this will include all the points at the boundary. So in other words, the closure of this set S becomes the following closed set. Now this is the smallest closed set uh, containing the set S. Now there are some uh, sets which are neither open nor closed. So one of them is this uh, punctured disc. Now this is punctured, in other words, uh, the center is not included in the disc and the boundary is included. Okay. Now, uh, why this is not open? So, the set is not open because uh, these points at the boundary are not interior points and according to the definition, a set is open if uh, every point of the set is an interior point. Now, the points at the boundary are not the interior points, so that's why we can say that uh, this set is not open. Now, let's see why the set is not closed. Now, uh, according to the fact that we just observed, uh, if a set is closed, then it must contain all its accumulation point. And we can see that uh, this point Z0, which is at the center, this Z0 is in fact accumulation point of this set, let's say S. Now, why this is an accumulation point? Because every punctured neighborhood of this Z0 contains elements of S. So, Z0 is accumulation point. So, Z0 is accumulation point, but it is not contained in the set S, and so the set is not closed because if it is closed, then it contains all its accumulation points. So, the set S is not closed. So, uh, there are many other examples where the sets are neither open nor closed. Similarly, we can find examples which are both open as well as closed. Now, consider the entire complex plane. Now, the entire complex plane is open because uh, every point of this uh, complex plane is an interior point. Take any point and uh, we can easily find a neighborhood of that point which is contained in the plane. So, it is open. Now, let's see why it is not closed because there is no boundary. So, the condition is uh, a set is closed if it contains all its boundary points. Since there is no boundary, so by definition, it is also closed. And there are many other examples of sets which are both open as well as closed. Now, we learned about open sets, closed sets and closure of a set.